I've come out into the garden here in what is rather wet, drizzly day to check on the zucchinis. Zucchinis are one of those great summer crops that are highly productive and you can produce a lot of food off a very small space and with very little effort. But quite frequently we don't correctly estimate the number of plants that we need to put in. And I find a lot of people put in too many plants and overproduce and end up with lots and lots of zucchinis to deal with. Often the thought we have is we'll give them to our friends. Well, we usually find that our friends also have too many zucchinis. So what do you do about it? Well, of course, the first thing you can do is to make a mental note that next year you need to plant less, <laughs> put in less plants. But there is a little bit of a limit, like I generally grow three plants and that is more than sufficient for us as a family. But I don't like to grow two, which would probably be enough because at two, if one died, I would very quickly be at one, which wouldn't quite be enough. So I tend to over produce that little bit to ensure that I don't lose out over the year. And that's a pretty good idea because it doesn't take much space to do it. But what it does mean is that you're still going to have a little bit extra produce. So here's some ideas as to how you can actually deal with that problem, particularly if you've planted you know, four, five, six plants and you've got way too many zucchinis. One of the first things that you can do is simply to pick your zucchinis smaller. Now, zucchinis grow very quickly and so you need to come every day and check them and pick them. But occasionally you'll miss some. They can tend to be a little bit camouflaged in there. And it's very easy to miss one and find they've grown too big. I think about this size is a good size to pick with this variety that's just at the point which the flower is dropped off. They're still fine to eat up to twice the size of these with this variety, but I would be getting a lot more volume of zucchini and that would simply be more for the kitchen to utilize. So picking them smaller reduces that volume that you have to deal with. A second thing that you can do is and this particularly applies if you have, say, more than three, if you've got four or five or six plants, is simply to allocate some to produce marrows for winter. That means simply stop picking them. Let them grow till they're very large and the skin will become quite hard and over the months, the inside will change. Uh, it will become generally a nice yellow or even a light orange color inside depending on the variety and they're fine they will keep for months and months over winter you can use them in soups and stews they're not as tasty as the traditional pumpkin that we grow but they're still food and it's another way of actually utilizing them and controlling that crop it's a much better solution than just putting them back into the compost the third option is to apply some way of preserving them for later use. Now, look, there are a few ways of doing that. One simple one would be to dry them because most vegetables can be dried. So you could cut them up, slice them or cube them, put them in a dehydrator. What you're going to get is going to shrink a lot because there's a lot of water in a zucchini and it's not going to be very tasty, but it's still going to be fine to add to a, a soup or stew uh, in winter time. Another way that people often use is to cook with them, to make a zucchini cooked product like zucchini slice or a zucchini fritter and to freeze it. This is okay if you have freezer space available. I'm not a big fan of freezing because I usually think that freezing is way too energy reliant and a bit uncertain. But it is another way of using them and rather than just cooking it on its own and putting it in the freezer, which isn't a very good product uh, in my experience, putting them into another food like a zucchini slice is a much uh, better way of freezing zucchini. The third option to preserve them is to pickle. And that's my favorite 
My favorite way to pickle them is to make a sweet mustard pickle. And basically, we used to a cauliflower mustard pickle, there's a common one that's around, to take that recipe and to replace the, the cauliflower and cucumber with zucchini. And it makes a perfect pickle. And that's what I'm doing today. So we'll get out of the rain, we'll go inside and I'll show you how I do it. This morning I prepared one and a half kilos of zucchinis, chopped them up uh, probably to about half centimetre to one centimetre cubes, fairly roughly. Then I peeled and processed around about one kilo of onions, about a dozen onions, depends on size. And also a couple of bits of garlic, my elephant garlic. And I threw a few jalapenos in too, just to spice it up a little bit, though these are not very hot. The onions and garlic I put through the food processor to chop it up because chopping onions by hand is somewhat a tearful process. All that I've put into a pot and just covered with the water and I've added to it a cup of salt. Now that has been sitting here in this pot for the last four hours. You can soak it overnight but I find four hours is quite sufficient and occasionally I've come along and given it a mix. What I'm ready to do now is to drain and rinse those vegetables so to get most of the salt off. You need to rinse the veggies fairly well and I often give them a full bath in fresh water before actually rinsing them again and then getting as much of the liquid out as possible so that you end up with a fairly dry veggie mix, not too much of that water in it. Now, to add to that pot, what I have is three categories of things to, to come in. One is vinegars. Now, in this, I've got two types of vinegar. I've got three cups of my own homemade apple cider vinegar and three cups of white vinegar. So six cups of vinegar in total there. Spices, I've got three tablespoons of mustard, one tablespoon of turmeric and a couple of teaspoons of curry powder. So that'll be the spice for it. Now I like it fairly spicy, some recipes don't use as much mustard as this, but I like it quite spicy. And then sweetening, because it is a sweet spiced pickle, I've got two cups of raw sugar and one cup of xylitol. So you can use whatever sweetener you like. Uh, the recipes would go for a little bit, like four cups of sugar if it was standard. So I'm using xylitol, which is a little bit sweeter than sugar there, so I've cut it down a little bit as well. So I'm going to add those in, putting the sugar in first, the spices, and then pouring the vinegar in, and we'll mix that up and start cooking it. Put it on to cook. So it's on to cook now, and really it's going to be a while on here. It needs to not only dissolve the sugars, but to actually cook the vegetable till it's reasonably tender. Uh, usually I'd find that takes probably at least 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour, uh, before the next stage, which is to thicken it. Well, it's been cooking for around 50 minutes now, and they're looking reasonably well cooked. Zucchini amazingly takes a while to cook when it's a pickle. So it's time for the final stage, and what I'm going to add is some thickening. That's some corn flour, to which I've added a minimal amount of water. Uh, there's about three quarters of a cup of corn flour went into that. and mix it through well and that'll really thicken it up now I will put the recipe for this in the description if anyone wants it 
cook it for a short time after adding the thickening and then put it into some sterilized jars. Now while it's best to let this pickle sit on the shelf for at least three weeks or more and it will improve in flavor, of course it's really hard to resist having a little taste as soon as you've made it, see what it's like. And I think it's pretty good even if I made it myself. But I know it will get better as time goes by. So hopefully that's given you a couple of ideas as to what you can do if you have too many zucchinis in the garden. So what do you think? Yum. <laughs>